Forecast News is your gateway to all things blockchain. We do the deep dive and the due diligence on the blockchain projects and platforms that matter because we aim to be the most reliable source of intellectual discourse and insight that inform, educate, and bridge the gap between the blockchain industry and the mainstream. Welcome to this episode of In Conversation with On Forecast News Editor-in-Chief Angie Lau and with me right now here in Shanghai, all the way from Barcelona here at the Mobile World Congress is Minister Jordi Pinheiro. He is the Minister of Digital Technology and Policies and also Public Administration. So really thinking about how digital technology can help him serve the people and this is a question that we often ask here on Forecast News. What is the role of regulators and policymakers in the emerging technology of blockchain? So, you know, it is very uh, promising. The potential of blockchain is huge. But what is the role of policymakers like yourself to implement, to encourage, to control? Well, I think we are at a very early stage of blockchain right now. Still, it's, um, uh, it's at the beginning of the hype of blockchain. You know, technologies have a hype uh, phase and then they go down and then they finally become technologies which are used by everyone. Now, we, we could see, for example, how Internet, when Internet arrived you know, at the beginning, Internet brought us uh, connectivity. Yeah. Well, blockchain uh, will bring us a new governance a new way of understanding how we govern our society, how we govern our cities, how we understand the role of the citizens in this new society. Uh, we've seen in the, in the history of humanity in which um, power has, um, uh, was, has come from a very centralized position of a person had the power. Now, uh, you know, we have four powers in our current society. We have the judicial power, the executive power, the legislative power, even the press, it's the fourth power. So I think the fifth power will be the empowered digital citizens. Digital citizens will have a role in the, um, in the new society. And we need to take that into account that blockchain can be a technology to favor uh, that uh, sort of new society, at least in Catalonia and in Barcelona, we want to, uh, to, to have. Uh, I always say that um, we've been doing uh, governing and doing politics uh, for the people in the past, now we have to do politics and govern the people with the people. So uh, blockchain can be a good alliance uh, for that purpose. What are some of the blockchain initiatives that you've implemented in Barcelona? Well, we are we're doing various things. First of all, we, uh, we believe that uh, the governments um, uh, must trust the society, which means that we want society to do things, not just uh, the government. The government needs to put the actual tools and make the environment uh, appropriate for uh, this type of um, technology solutions to uh, uh, arise from, from, from business, from society, etc. So the first thing we're doing is trying to build an ecosystem. And to build an ecosystem, you need to, um, to um, have a policy at uh, the beginning, which is uh, not uh, it's a soft policy. It's, uh, you know, let, let the society do, and we will regulate according to uh, the proof of concepts that we are seeing that uh, how the changing of the rules are being done. You know? So um, we, we are favoring a lot the actual trying to uh, attract talent to Barcelona. So we want uh, digital talent in the world to, to be here, to be not in Shanghai, but to be in Barcelona also in Shanghai, but specifically in Barcelona, because uh, uh, talented people will uh, provide a, a better society in terms of arising new uh, solutions for the society. So that's our first issue. Uh, secondly, obviously there are, um, from the government, we can be tr uh, tractors of these. Um, we, we spend a lot of money in uh, various areas in terms of, uh, let's put one example, for example, uh, in the U.S., uh, the DARPA department, you know, uh, it's, you know, uh, it pushes innovation a lot through because they invest a lot in, obviously, military systems. In Catalonia, we believe that our DARPA is our healthcare system wow. because we put a lot of money in our universal healthcare system. It's a public uh, 
um, healthcare system. Uh, so we want that all the solutions in health use innovation and technology. So we, uh, by doing that, uh, we are making the companies uh, that provide the, the solutions to a healthcare system to really innovate in uh, healthcare systems, solutions using 5G, artificial intelligence, blockchain. So we can be also, um, uh, uh, we, can, we can foster innovation in Catalonia from the public services. But you can't have blockchain technology without the tokenization, the cryptocurrency aspect of that blockchain, especially if you're going to serve the end user. So what's your viewpoint on allowing the freedom of usage of tokens, of coins, yeah. of cryptocurrency? We've started to do that, for example, with energy. Um, we uh, have many people in Catalonia which are energy producers, few uh, green and, and clean energies. And sometimes they have an excedent of energy which mm, they must put in the market. So we are creating a market of uh, ener uh, green energy using uh, tokenized uh, crypto uh, currencies. Uh, so uh, that's one way of doing it. So, but this is a pilot project right now in, in Catalonia. And uh, so we are not pushing a specific uh, cryptocurrency for everyone at the moment. We understand that uh, this solution will come from a bigger scale. We've seen Libra just uh, starting right now. Uh, but we can, uh, we've started in specific, uh, more um, specific markets, for example, the energy market. Uh, so that's one of the actual. We're also doing that for, uh, we're using blockchain for, for example, um, uh, organ transplants. Uh, so in which uh, uh, one can uh, put uh, the, the use of information in terms of your organs, no? how uh, when you die, um, how your organs can be used. Uh, so and in terms of the smart contract, your exactly. wishes yeah. will be executed exactly. on yeah. the blockchain. That's exactly. incredible. That's two examples. We have, we have more, but we are pushing these type of examples, proof of concepts in these areas, because we believe that that's the best way for society to understand that these type of technologies, uh, they are creating new opportunities. Sometimes there's a fear from many people that uh, technology will kill uh, jobs. And we must tell them that uh, every single technology revolution that's been in the past has created more jobs that existed before. And we don't have to think that this time will be different. We believe that uh, specifically in, um, in digital technologies, in Catalonia, in Barcelona, we don't uh, just want uh, to be only consumers of these technologies, we want to be producers. Yeah. You want to create that ecosystem. Uh, exactly. That so, could potentially be applied in other markets as well. Uh, exactly. So you're actually doing proof of concept because of your universal healthcare interests. That's one of the ways, because we put a lot of money there. So that's a way of uh, enforcing uh, uh, innovation because we, we set out the rules in that yeah. sense. You mentioned Facebook Libra project. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the, the buzz concept, buzzword. A lot of people are interested in it. Mm -hmm. uh, nations around the world are paying uh, attention very closely. Uh, they are worried, voting. very worried. Everyone is worried. Why is everybody <laughs> worried? Well, not me, but uh, I think that, um, you know, this type of big changes always uh, make, uh, you know, big players, uh, you know, uh, be worried. Yeah? But, uh, I think that's the same when internet came, you know, and, uh, you know, and WhatsApp appeared and, you know, big telephone companies uh, suddenly see that uh, there is in the over the top solution, a solution which is uh, worldwide used and uh, that makes the previous services, the traditional telephone services, uh, no longer uh, useful for the most of the consumers. But that's the way it is. So we have to adapt to that. And I think that uh, I think banks and uh, real uh, and governments will understand that uh, Libra, as well as other solutions, will come up. And in the end, we will have some universal cryptocurrency uh, uh, cryptocurrencies that will be used. And uh, that that will be. It's, I think what Libra has done has accelerated this process. Uh, I don't know whether Libra will be the uh, one of the most used uh, cryptocurrencies or not. I no one, no one knows that yet. 
but I'm sure that that will accelerate the process of uh, digital currencies, uh, which is something that has been talked about in the past, and uh, that we didn't see really, really the actual implementation of that. I think that now uh, Libra, it's uh, for the first time, it's uh, a real serious um, um, option uh, that is seen, I think, with interest and fear from, from the big players. But uh, I think Libra is, is, has come to stay, as well as other cryptocurrencies will, will come up in the future. Because the, the real uh, decision or the real thing about that is to find stabilized uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, which uh, are really uh, a solution for trading, uh, for world trading, yeah. uh, which is something that uh, we must understand it's uh, necessary for everyone. Well, it's the promise of blockchain. It actually returns the power of the global economy into the hand of the individual through smartphone technology, which is why we're here at Mobile World Congress. Yeah, well, that's what uh, blockchain is about. No? It's distributing um, power uh, yes. into uh, citizens, but also into other, not to, de to decentralize uh, the power in yeah. many terms, in terms of money, in terms of uh, how we uh, understand our data, uh, so that data is not only we understand, for example, that in, uh, in Barcelona and in Catalonia, we have seen now in the world, in the past, we've seen that two big uh, models of how data um, uh, was being governed. No? For example, we've seen maybe the Chinese model in which you know, the government, some sort of data is uh, government controlled. No? We've seen in the states in which data is more controlled and owned by the companies. No? Yeah. I think that Europe must put a third model on the table, which is data should be owned and governed by the citizens mm. and i think blockchain uh, can help on can help us on that purpose you also talk about how it allows nations uh here in asia specifically emerging and frontier markets uh, there's really only one developed market here in asia and that's japan mm. everybody else is on the earlier spectrum of global uh, economic growth right but with technology like blockchain, it really allows different nations and sovereigns to leapfrog yeah. in terms of its economy. How do you hope to do the same in Barcelona? Well, uh, for us, it's a big opportunity because we are a small nation. Catalonia is a small nation. It's part of uh, Spain right now. But we believe that this type of technology empowers uh, our, our people, empowers uh, also our institutions in order to be able to actually uh, deal with a globalized world. Um, so we've always been a, a decentralized uh, nation, uh, so we don't fear much. Actually, we see blockchain and all these new technologies as an, as an opportunity for growth and for wealth for our citizens. You've seen what Malta has done, Gibraltar, and really kind of uh, develop a regulatory language that creates a welcoming environment for blockchain talent and projects and teams to set up base of business there. What are you doing from a policy front to do this either the same thing or is your vision something else? I think um, in terms of, uh, as I said, we are at the very early stage yes. of all these technologies. So our position is yet not to regulate before but to regulate after. So once we see how these technologies actually impact in society yeah? and decide whether we need to regulate or not. Yeah. Sometimes uh, you just very need a very soft regulation. In terms of, um, of uh, I think the talent will be uh, the raw material of this digital revolution. You know, in the industrial revolution, we see, we've seen where oil, uh, electricity uh, actually powered uh, you know, the, uh, the Industrial Revolution was the actual uh, main uh, material or raw material that was needed. In this is the world, the talent and the people, talented people will be uh, actually the essential, yeah? essential material. So how do we attract talent? That's, uh, how do we retain talent, actually? And how do we generate new talent? So we are fostering our policies in these topics. That means uh, helping our uh, first of all, uh, changing our educational system so that we, in order that we 
prepare our kids for uh, the digital future. That's one of the big policies we're actually uh, working on. The second one is how do we uh, retain talent and how do we attract new talent in this digital uh, area? And that means um, we've uh, created a, a technological uh, centers ec uh, ecosystem. That means they are spin-offs of our universities in order to specialize uh, in each of these technologies, um, uh, innovation and research. That means, for example, we have uh, um, a, a technological center which is i2CAD, it's the Internet of the Future. Another one which specializes in computer vision um, uh, technologies. Another one in artificial intelligence, in quantum technologies. So that also makes uh, talent from abroad coming to Barcelona because um, when you research and when you, when you innovate in these areas, that's obviously good for also for the industry because the, uh, you get spin-offs from these uh, technological centers which generate solutions. And the third uh, area is what can we do from the government? Yes. As I said, uh, in the United States, uh, the um, DARPA model can be exported to other areas. We don't have, uh, we don't pretend to be a, uh, a military power in the world, but we want to be a, um, a health power in the world. So we believe that uh, our Healthcare system is very good. It has been very good in the past. And now we want, to, we want, we want it to be the best digital health uh, system in the world. And from that, we can spin off uh, a lot of uh, technolo technological solutions like you can do from the DARPA model. Yeah. You know, GPS, internet, uh, all uh, uh, important technological solutions that now we use in our civil uh, usage. Yeah. They came from... Uh, uh, military military investigation. No? So we believe that we can do that from our uh, health uh, care system, which is uh, our it's where we put more money from the public yeah. uh, our public system. What are you learning uh, as you roam the halls here in the conversations that you're having here in China mm -hmm. and really across the region? What are the ideas that you're going to be marrying with your own? Well, I think uh, China is a big scale. It's huge for us, no? Uh, I mean, um, obviously, we are 8 million people in Catalonia. Uh, Barcelona accounts for 5 million people. So, uh, I mean, um, we, uh, I think we, uh, we have a size in which uh, uh, we, can, uh, do, we can be a very interesting uh, lab. Uh, we actually we say Catalonia is a living lab for digital technologies because our our size is the uh, right size like Shanghai for example no yes. it's uh, Hong, Hong Kong. Kong or Hong Kong yeah. no? uh, which is obviously they are, they are bigger than, than we are but you know they are this like uh, nation nation cities no uh, uh, we believe that we are somehow like that no because Barcelona is our big capital city but uh, and um, so I think we have more to learn from Shanghai, from Hong Kong, from uh, Denmark, from Estonia, than, uh, than we do have from a huge, massive, <laughs> you know, uh, nation like is China, no? which is uh, the variety of uh, problems that they need to solve in terms of uh, uh, mobility, environment, etc. I think that they are not uh, explored. But for, if I had to, to see, uh, how can we uh, collaborate with uh, places like Shanghai and uh, I think, for example, mobility, you know, uh, how mobility, how we address mobility in the future in terms of people moving from one part of the other, uh, how intelligent mobility, you know, uh, using 5G, autonomous vehicles. I think that um, I think we can we can collaborate a lot and also perhaps uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, health uh, that we are, I think we are strong on that issue. Uh, we could also collaborate with uh, areas like, like this. Um, I think obviously uh, Shanghai and uh, Hong Kong, they are very interesting places to learn yeah. from. Fintechs, we, I think we can learn from a lot from, from the fintech area, which, in which we are not very uh, strong. Uh, I think here they need to apply um, uh, I think climate change is one of the big issues in the world right now. Uh, 
and uh, how we, uh, you know, uh, pollution, how we make pollution go down. I think it uh, can be a good thing that they can learn from us. We, we have uh, a lot of, a lot, work a lot on, on, that, on that issue, in that area. So yeah. uh, I think there are many areas in which we can learn from each other. And uh, sometimes we don't need to reinvent the wheel, but to learn from, from what they are doing. Also, there are many areas in which we can collaborate. So uh, my, my goal here is to, to see what is Shanghai doing in those areas, as well as I'm going to Hong Kong uh, in a couple of days. So uh, I think learning from each other, I think knowledge, sharing knowledge is very important. Not reinventing the wheel, trying to, uh, to take uh, how innovation can, uh, can be uh, used also uh, from our side. How can our, how can our companies uh, be useful for yeah. uh, or the solutions we produce in Catalonia be used in Shanghai and Hong Kong? Well, that's uh, how the world uh, works today. Well, you're a very unique individual in this sense when it comes to technology because you come from the private enterprise side, yeah. from IT. Mm -hmm. Now you're in the public service yeah. side and you and I are in the same business. <laughs> We try to translate and decipher technology for the everyday person. Mm -hmm. Do you think that we're winning the fight? Do you think that knowledge and understanding still has a long way to go? Well, I think everyone, um, that, that has happened uh, every time in the past in history, you know? Uh, uh, people sometimes is afraid of uh, what they don't understand, and uh, and we we seeing that uh, digital technologies are changing our lives very quickly, very fast. They're changing our jobs. They're changing the way we live, uh, how we move, and that uh, really scares people sometimes, specifically when it goes so quickly. So the role uh, that we have uh, from the public administration is to tell people that. Uh, this is coming to stay uh, and um, it will create new jobs if we are so uh, smart enough to understand that we need to adapt. Uh, you know, uh, Darwin said that uh, the animals and the species, uh, it doesn't survive uh, the strongest, but the one that adapts quicker to the new environment. So um, that's what we need to do. We need to. Uh, tell people that uh, this is uh, technology is uh, it's neutral. Uh, it's how we use it uh, that uh, then has an ideology, you know. And uh, so, but we need to tell them that uh, technology has bring progress to our people always. And um, and uh, so, trying to um, to to make the only way people will understand that is when they see when they can touch it and they when you can see that uh, how that it really affects because there's a lot of theories there's a lot yeah. of people talking about the bad things about uh, these type of technologies but in the end when people start understanding and seeing the real impact then uh, and that see that the government uh, helps on that transition so that nobody is led behind uh, so that we put from the government as well social solutions and some sort of regulations that, have, that helps people to um, uh, um, um, go forward with these technologies, then uh, all these fears disappear. And uh, so uh, that's some sort uh, of my, my role in the government. That is try to uh, uh, let these technologies um, be introduced at the speed which people can consume them uh, so that they don't oppose to them. So there's a lot of work to do still, but uh, my, I, my belief is that uh, that's the only way to go and that the uh, nations of the future that want to be at the forefront of this digital revolution, they need to do that. Otherwise, putting new barriers, uh, putting stoppers, uh, trying to stop uh, this uh, technological revolution, uh, the only thing that it will do is that it will uh, um, the problems will be there anyway because they will be consumers, but we won't be producers. And in Catalonia, we want to be also producers of these technologies because then that uh, becomes the way of having jobs in yes. that area, 
and by having jobs we have more income to redistribute to create these social services for the people that uh, are left behind a virtuous cycle and as they say and i'll just borrow this phrase Technology is like water. It will always find a way. It will always find a way, yes. Thank you so much for joining us, Minister Primiero. We are here in uh, Shanghai, Mobile World Congress 2019, talking about blockchain technology and the promise of it. So thank you for joining us and thank you as well. Until the next time, I'm Editor-in-Chief of Forecast News, Angie Lau.